we open your word tonight as we continue on on our series called Wait Listed. I pray, Lord, that your word would be clearly communicated, that Jesus Christ, the author and finisher of our faith, will be highly exalted, and that these students and people watching this video will be blessed. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, again, we are week two of our series that we are calling Wait Listed. And we're kind of talking about what it truly means to wait on the Lord, or to wait on God. And so if you missed out last week, if you weren't here, totally cool. It is available on our YouTube channel, so you can still catch up with us. So last week was really cool. We kind of talked about waiting is something that we all don't like to do, right? Especially if you're in line for Chick-fil-A, right? And there's a huge line, we're like, no, I just want my food now. And, and you know, we have to wait, right? And so, you know, and so as we talk about waiting and waiting, right? What I wanted to start off with is a video that, um, that this, when I saw this, this must have been the longest game of Jenga ever played. And we're not gonna watch the whole thing, it's just snippets of it, okay? Watch this clip. All right, go ahead. That was a commercial? Yeah, that was a cat commercial. That was a cat commercial. But imagine that, like a crazy game of Django, right? Now, the game was meant to showcase the ability of the cat machine, right? The, the, right? And it went on for 28 hours. That's how long the game was. That's how long that was. By the end, they were, they were 13 layers of blocks, and it was 20 feet high. So imagine that. But I got a question for you guys. Now, I'm guessing you've never, I know you and I, have, I've never played a 28-hour game of Jenga, right? None of y'all, any of y'all played a 28-hour Jenga game? No. All right, but what's the longest game you ever played, and how long did it last? Monopoly. Video games count? Yes, video games count. How, what's, Monopoly. Monopoly, how long? Five hours. Five, five, five. Frozen. Frozen? Oh, uh, Joseph, how many how many hours was it? I mean, if we count like Minecraft or something like that. Total playtime. Play I like had Minecraft. several games. I really multiple weeks and hours. Yeah. Probably Super Mario Brothers. Super Mario? How long have you played Super Mario? I don't know, my sisters. That one summer. How many hours? I don't know. It was the ranch summer. The BBS ranch summer. Okay. So it was like what? We played like all day and we had to go to church. Oh. Anyone else? Any, any other games? John, what do you got, Sean? I have a game that I have like almost three days, like played time. Oh, that's a good one. Like, I don't know. 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 Like, I
Wow. Three days of playing time. Now, okay, now check this out. Now, I don't know about you, like I said before, but if I'm going to invest that much time, shh, if I'm going to invest that much time in a game, I better, I better win at the end. Like, I don't know about you. But to, but to spend so much time on something and then it ends with disappointment, that's pretty disappointing, right? Like you've worked so hard and then you're competing, competing, and, and it takes forever and then you fall short. Like, ah, oh, not a really good feeling. But um, I remember for me, there was, there was a time in my life when I was younger, I've literally always wanted um, a pair of LeBron shoes. And like I bought, my, my, my parents bought me my very first pair and, and, I, and, and I worn and worn until it, until it worn out. But then ever since that I, I, I no longer wore them, I was like, I want some, I want them. And I saw all my friends have some and all my friends have some. And then I found one online for like, cause some of the, it was about $200 shoes, basketball shoes. And I was like, man, I want them so bad. And I want them and I want them. And I waited and I waited for so long. And then when I got my pair that I, I, I bought uh, when, it, when I was in college, I saved up all my money and I bought it. It, it wasn't w w how I wanted it to be. It wasn't how it turned out to be. Like I wasn't, at first I was like, oh, and then I looked at them. I lo it looked good on the screen, but then when I grabbed them, it was mm, not, not what I thought they would be. I thought they would be cooler. I want to get like a $10 pair of shoes from Walmart That'd be cool. Now, now check this out, guys. Now, have you ever? This is a question for you guys. Have you ever? I go about the screen. Have you ever been disappointed by something you spent a long time waiting for? Yeah. What was it? Fried chicken. Fried chicken. Okay. What? What? Okay. So, so you spent so much time waiting for it, and then they turn out how it's supposed to. What about you, Emily? Okay, so what, 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 so how long, have you ever been disappointed by something? What, what, what was it? Results for what? For anything contest related. Ah, okay. Why have you, have you waited so, have you been disappointed by something you spent so long waiting for? Anyone else? Anybody? Anybody? Come on, you guys, you guys have to be disappointed by something waiting, Sean? Was, I was the next to last person to go, and so I had to wait until the following Monday. Oh. Being an adult. Being, being an adult. adult sucks. No. You want to be an adult? Well, you're not even an adult. And then adult. you get to being an adult, and it's the biggest disappointment. Yeah, I get you. I get you. But I'll tell you what, guys. Disappointment happens. Not a, none of you agree. Disappointment happens, right? Yeah. It happens. No. Wow. I'm surprised, Joseph. Surprised. But I'm sure we've all felt it, right? I felt it. My wife has felt it. Everybody has felt disappointment, you know? But sometimes we invest a ton of time anticipating an upcoming event. It could be like a gift or a win for sports. But then things don't go your way the way you hoped to go. Okay, there you go. So struggle is real. There you go. Sometimes, keep playing this, sometimes the struggle is really real, right? It's really real. Now, maybe you've known what it's like for life to surprise you with a big loss, turn of events, or dis disappointments, right? You know, when those surprises, when those surprises hit, we often, we're often left waiting and wondering, why does this happen? Why does this, why, why did this happen? How long will I feel this way? How do I fix it? Can anyone help me? Or maybe even, where is God? And, and today, guys, I want to I wanna talk about how to survive. How to survive some of these times of disappointment and crisis and where God is where we're waiting. God is, sorry, say this again. Today I want to talk about 
how to survive some of the times of disappointment and crisis and where God is when we're waiting for things to turn around. So I want you to look at this board over here, shall we? Look at this board here. So I'm going to scoot over here. Okay, and it says, when I, when I, when blank, I feel blank. And I want you to fill in this part right here. Cool beans? Cool beans. Cool beans. Ireland, cool beans. Emily? All right, so the first one. Sorry, I'm going to say, all right. So when? I don't get garlic. When your parents divorce, I feel what? Everything. Okay, over here. I feel, uh, I, I don't really care. You don't really care? No, so, so how is, oh how? Disappointed. Disappointed? This. Angry. Heartbroken. Okay, not you, honey. All right, kids, students. Ireland, how, when, when, when your parents divorce, I feel what? Mix emotions. <clears throat> Can I get one more? Sean, when your parents divorce, I feel what? Uh, I have to fix one, so I don't know. You question everything. I guess that works. How about, how about uncertain? Uh, mm -hmm. Yep. How about that? OK. Next one. Let's go to the next one. Ireland, Wyatt, you could probably, Emily, you could probably relate to this. All said, you're going to miss this. When, when you lose a big game, cool. I feel what? Angry. I feel like okay. I okay. What else? Absolutely. Disappointed in myself. So, so, so. Blame. blame. I feel blame. Okay. That's a good one. That's a good one, uh, Wyatt. What else? Regret. Regret? Why? You like, you could have done something better or more, and it didn't happen. I'll tell you what, I'm glad you said that. I recently, my, my parents surprised me and my wife to see the championship game for the women's uh, national championship oh. at San Antonio. Yeah, I'll show you pictures a little bit. But I saw it was, and there was, it was 53-52, and Arizona had the ball. And so they, the girl drove in, and literally she was like double teamed, like, and like her teammates were like, "I'm open, I'm open." There was a lot of open options, right? There was a lot of open options, and then the girl just chucks it, like just chucks it with desperation, and misses and loses the championship game. Yeah. So if you were in her shoes, how would you feel? Like you said, you maybe regret, blame, angry. Can I get one more? Uh, Why? Oh, so give me another word for that. Give me like another word for that. Shocked? Devastated? There you go. That's a good word. How about? I'll put, devast I'll put devastated here. Okay. I got, I got one for myself. How about this word? Ashamed. Okay. Okay. Number three. When a loved one gets sick, I feel blank. Hopeless. Hopeless? Sad? Why not? Sad? Just because you've never gone through it doesn't mean you've had. I think. No, I've gone through it. I just can't remember. I mean, it, it depends on. Yeah. <laughs> I guess. Babe, how how okay, I'll tell you this, babe. How how was you, how did you feel when you found out your dad was getting when your dad was getting surgery? Um, hopeless, fearful. There you go. I'll, anxious, I'll, I'll, devastated. How about and anybody? Sid, when a when a loved one gets when a loved one gets sick, I feel what helpless, Sid? Helpless. helpless. Oh, that's a good one. Okay, uh, I'm gonna put this one down. Afraid. Yes. All right, last one. Last one, guys. When you make a big mistake. Oh my gosh. 
God. When you make a big mistake, I feel what? Embarrassed. Shameful? Heartbroken. Anxious. Full? Okay, anxious? Aggravated. Okay, heartbroken. I got her heartbroken, aggravated. Cat's policy. Embarrassed? Embarrassed? All right, one more. Disappointed. Disappointed? Why? When you're the, because I made, the mis I made a mistake. Okay. I could have not let it. Okay, how about this word? <laughs> Defeated. Mm. All right. I'll come back to that in just a minute. So, in many of these situations, guys, right? In many of these situations we just brainstormed, the disappointment or crisis is followed by a time of waiting. Can we say that? Waiting. You might be waiting to feel better, to get a second chance, to see if your situation will improve, or maybe you're waiting to see if God will help you. And while you're waiting, you might wonder, can God really be trusted? Does God actually care? Can God even see me? If God really loves me, why am I still waiting? And if you can relate to any of this, you're not alone. So today, let me introduce you to someone from Scripture who knows a lot about surviving major moments of crisis and disappointment. Do you know who that is? Joe? Nope. Yeah, that is uh, Joe. Nope. Uh, so... If you're familiar, if you're familiar, if you're familiar with the Bible, there's a good chance you've heard of the Apostle Paul. Paul? Yeah, anyone ever heard of that guy in the Bible? Yeah. Joseph? All right. So now check this out. Paul spent his whole life following God. As a young Jewish man, he was a high-achieving religious student of his time. But his story took its first major turn during the early years of Christianity, when the message of Jesus was first beginning to spread. Now, as a religious leader in the Jewish faith, Paul did not follow the teachings of Jesus. In fact, he believed the followers of Jesus were enemies of God. There, this belief drove Paul to defend his faith by imprisoning and even killing Christians. But then something significant happens in Paul's life. He had a what personal encounter with God and surrendered his life to Jesus. And when Paul met Jesus, he couldn't have predicted what God had in store for him. Paul eventually became one of the, one of the greatest Christian influencers of all time. He wrote much of the New Testament of the Bible was a significant leader of the early church and was responsible for bringing the message of Jesus into new parts of the world. And despite everything good God had in store for Paul, Paul's life after turning towards Jesus held pretty difficult moments too, including some big crisis and a lot of waiting. One of the major ways Paul was often waitlisted during his life was being sent to prison. Ironic, isn't it, right? Sent to prison. After spending so much time and effort throwing followers of Jesus into prison, that's exactly where Paul ended up. Even though Paul had changed his beliefs about Jesus, many of the governments and religious leaders of the day had not. In their eyes, allowing someone to spread the message of Jesus was a threat to their power, control, and understanding of God. So, this is what they did. They tried to imprison, sometimes kill, influential followers of Jesus. Paul spent about five years of, life, of his life in prison for spreading the message of Jesus. While he was there, I wonder if he ever thought, um, uh, God, uh, how am I supposed to fulfill your plans for my life if I keep getting thrown in jail? Every time things start going well, I end up behind bars. What are you doing, God? Like, bro, what's going on? Why, are you, why aren't you stopping this? God, hello? Like, bruh, what is it, man? Like, 
You know, and we can read uh, uh, about one of these occasions in the book of Acts. And so if you have your Bibles, join me in Acts chapter 16. And Acts, guys, is a book in the Bible that recounts how the good news of Jesus spread around the world, how the early church began to grow, and we see what happens, what happened to some of the key leaders of the time, like Paul. And we'll start with Acts 16, and this passage it tells us about one of Paul's journeys to Macedonia and what happened to him there along with his friend Silas. It says here in Acts 16, beginning in verse 6, if you have your tablets or phones, it says this. It says, They went through the region of uh, Phrygia and, Gal and Galatia, and they'd been forbidden by the Holy Spirit to speak the word in Asia. When they came to Missa, Mysia, they tried to go into uh, Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus did not allow them. Passing by Mysia, they went down to Toras. During the night, Paul had a vision in which a Macedonian man was standing and pleading with him, Cross over to Macedonia and help us! After he had seen the vision, we immediately made efforts to set out for Macedonia concluding that God had called us to preach the gospel to them. And so if you had time, you may want to provide, uh, sorry, uh, but, uh, sorry, excuse me. <clears throat> now, did you catch that, guys? Like, after a long journey where God finally leads Paul and his crew to Macedonia, they face a major crisis. All right? And so, we, oh, sorry, we continue on. So they, they, they're, trying, they're going to Macedonia, right? Let's scroll down to verse 16 says this, Once, as we were on our way to, pr to, a, to prayer, a slave girl met us who had a spirit by which she predicted the future. She made a large profit for her owners by fortune telling. As she followed Paul to us, she cried out, These men who are proclaiming to you the way of salvation are the servants of the Most High God. She did this for many days. Paul was greatly annoyed, turned to the spirit. He said, I command you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out right away. When her owners realized they were, they, that their hope of profit was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace to the authorities. Bringing them before the chief magistrates, they said, these men are seriously disturbing our city. They are Jews and are promoting customs that are not legal for us as Romans to adopt our practice. The crowd joined in the attack against them, and the chief magistrate stripped off their clothes and ordered them to be beaten with rods. Ugh. After they had several, uh, several, severely flogged them, they threw them in jail, ordering the jailer to guard them carefully. Receiving such an order, he put them into the inner prison and secured their feet in the stocks. Now, did you catch that? all of that? After a long journey where God finally led Paul, leads Paul and his crew to Macedonia, they face a major crisis. Paul and Silas are beaten and thrown in prison. They're thrown in jail for preaching the message of Jesus. And this chapter tells us, tells us God clearly, like clearly led Paul and his friends to Macedonia to share the gospel. So if God, check this out, if God led them there, why did they end up in prison? Like, did they make a mistake? Did, they, did God make a mistake? Did God put them in prison on purpose? Now, while scripture doesn't, fully tell us, tells us why God allowed Paul and Silas to be thrown into prison. It does, however, make it clear that God didn't want them to be there. Now scroll with me in Acts 16. We're going to go to verse 25. It says this, About midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God. And the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was such a violent earthquake that the foundations of the jail were shaken. And immediately all the doors were open and everyone's chains came loose. When the jailer woke up and saw the doors of the prison standing open, he drew his sword and was going to kill himself since he thought the prisoners had escaped. But Paul 
called out in a loud voice, don't harm yourself because we're all here. The jailer called for lights, rushed in and fell trembling before Paul and Silas. He escorted them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? They said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved, you and your household. And they spoke of the word of the Lord to him along with everyone in his house. He took them the same hour of the night and washed their wounds. Right away, he and all his family were baptized. He brought them, brought them into his house, set, set a meal for them, and rejoiced because he had come to believe in God with his entire household. Verse 35. When daylight came, the chief magistrate sent the police to say, Release those men. The jailer reported, these words, uh, these words to Paul. The magistrate has sent orders for you to be released. So come out now and go in peace. But Paul said to them, They beat us in public without a trial, although we are Roman citizens and threw us in jail. And now, now, now are they going to send us away secretly? Certainly not. On the contrary, let them come themselves and escort us out. The police reported these words to the magistrates. They were afraid when they heard that Paul and Silas were Roman citizens. So they came to oppress them, appease them, sorry, and escort them from prison. They urged them to leave town. After leaving the jail, they came to Lydia's house, where they saw and encouraged the brothers and sisters and departed. Now, a lot of verses I know, but Paul and Silas were interrupted by disappointment and crisis. They were waiting for God to rescue them, and they got it. But in the meantime, they still found a reason to worship. Even while they were waiting and wondering what would happen next, God showed, showed up in a miraculous way. And God rescued Paul and Silas from prison, but that's not the only miracle that happened that night. You see, God rescued the jailer and his entire family too with the message of Jesus. Even when they were waiting for God's rescue, Paul and Silas trusted God. So Paul and Silas trusted God hadn't abandoned them. While they waited, they worshipped. And after they were rescued, they got right back to work. And now I didn't know which songs Paul and Silas were singing in prison, but I wondered if it was something like this. And this is a passage from the book of Psalms. And I'm going to read Psalms chapter 9. Psalms chapter 9, and I'm going to read the, verse, the first two verses. It says, it says, I will thank the Lord with all my heart. I will declare all your wondrous works. I will rejoice and boast about you. I will sing about your name, Most High. I'm going to scroll down to verse 9 and 11. The Lord, the Lord is a refuge for the persecuted, a refuge in times of trouble. Those who know your name trust in you because you have not abandoned those who seek you, Lord. Sing to the Lord who dwells in Zion. Proclaim his deeds among the nations. So guys, even though Paul and Silas were waiting in prison, wondering what God was going to do next, they found a reason to worship. They knew God could be trusted. They trusted God was with them. And they believed God would be faithful to them no matter what happens. And they were right. God was faithful to Paul and Silas while they waited in prison. And while we're, we're waiting, God is faithful to us too. And that's our bottom line tonight. Our bottom line tonight is while we're waiting, God is faithful. Now, faithful means to be loyal, constant, steadfast, and never failing. That's, that's who Paul and Silas, guys, knew God to be. But who's God to us? Let's go back to our board, shall we? Ireland, Emily, let's check out the board. So let's start with the first one, right? It's, it, the first one we said, when your parents divorce, I feel everything disappointed angry mixed emotions and uncertain but i want to put but 
God is unchanging. So when your parents divorce, I feel these things, but God is unchanging. Second one, when you lose a big game, you might feel angry, devastated, blame, ashamed, regret. However, God is your strength. Number three, I said, when a loved one gets sick, I feel hopeless, sad, fearful, helpless, afraid. However, God is your hope. And last one, when you make a big mistake, you feel shameful, anxious, heartbroken, aggravated, embarrassed, disappointed, defeated even. However, but God is your Savior. And students understand it's never easy to experience disappointment and cries like, the, like these. But just like Paul and Silas, we can always find reasons, find a reason to have hope and joy because God is faithful. And when you're waiting for hope to rescue or rescue, God can be trusted. The Bible, guys, is filled, I mean, filled with evidence of God's trustworthiness. So if you need more encouragement, go and look at the scripture and see what you can find. God is with you. You may think, oh, I'm alone, I feel I'm by myself. No, remember that God is with you. The Holy Spirit is God's gift to us. The Spirit is how God comforts us. It's, it's how He speaks to us, He leads us, and even helps us grow in our walk with Jesus. God is faithful to you no matter what happens. No matter what tomorrow brings, no matter what the outcome of your life may be, God's faithfulness will hover and cover you and will show you and He will show you how much he, His promises are never changing, never ending in your life. Paul and Silas were rescued from prison, right? Going back to the story, but they chose to sing to God even when they weren't sure what their futures held. They understood that God is faithful to us, even when we're waiting, and even when things don't turn out with the way we hoped. And, and I can tell you these things with confidence, not just because the Bible tells me so, but because I seen them to be true in my own life as well. I remember the time, and I'll never forget this, I remember um, just, just you know, wanting to be in a relationship. And I, I never forgot that. I was like, I prayed and I prayed. And, and I just like, I, and then I, 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 afterwards, I was just like, you know, after my ex and I broke up and it was a few months later, I was just like, Lord, I'm gonna do this right, I wanna do this right. And I prayed and I prayed and I spent time in the word and that was when out of the blue, this lovable woman texted me the most randomest thing. We won't say what it, we won't say what it is, but it was the most randomest thing. But at that point, we started a conversation and I, and even though we knew each other in the past, I apologize for my imperfection and my past things, but However, we developed a really strong friendship and we really bonded together in our friendship. And it wasn't until at my brother's and my sister-in-law's wedding where I danced with her and I told her for the very first time that I loved her. But it was also, but also but her, but her and, and I dating was a reminder for me that God was like, oh, you feel like you're not alone? Well, yeah, let me show you how faithful I am. You may think to yourself, oh, I'm so desperate for a relationship. I'm so desperate for, to, for a, 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 school, a school. I'm so desperate for a, 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 a scholarship or I'm so, I'm, I'm for a, a game or whatever. Guess what? God's faithfulness surpasses all that you're thinking. And all that's in your mind, God's faithfulness surpasses everything. God is faithful to you. 
And so now I don't know what disappointment or crisis you're facing right now. Or that you're, you're, you'll face them in the coming months or years. But when you find yourself waiting for God to rescue you, I hope you remember what we talked about today. Back to the bottom line, Sean. Uh, while you're waiting, while you're waiting, while you study the word, while you take that advantage of uh, New Morning Mercies and go do your Devo, use the journals that Vicky and I blessed you with and fill that book uh, with, with so much prayer and readings of God's word. And while you're in those moments, remember that phrase, God is faithful. That God will never leave you. That God is always with you. That God is right beside you. And that, and that you may, when you feel doubt, when you feel afraid, when you feel anxious, when you feel all those things, when these emotions come in, know that God is unchanging and that God promises to hold you in His mighty right hand. And so to, tonight, uh, um, this song, uh, uh, we're going to do tonight, so we're actually going to close with how Paul and Silas were in prison. They worshipped. And so the song that, I, uh, that the Lord laid in my heart is a song called uh, Gyra by Elevation Worship. And it is becoming one of my favorite songs. That I've heard it while on the road to church. And those words, guys, just sinks into my heart and and, and actually Jeho uh, Jeho uh, the whole phrase Jehovah Jireh means in Hebrew the Lord provides and and I want you and I want you to see in this video yes it's a music video but actually in this video I can I can feel that there was true genuine worship it was no, I don't care what people are looking at. I don't care uh, the, the, the impressed person. I'm caring. All I care about is my heart with myself and God. And so that's what I'll do tonight. You may be sitting in your chair and you may just like feel it, but I want to worship together. I want us to remember that while we're waiting, just like Paul and Silas did, they didn't, they didn't go, uh, let's play tic-tac-toe or, or let's do that. They probably did. I don't know. But, but while they waited, they probably magnified and glorified the Lord. And that's what I encourage you for all of us to do. That when you feel stuck, when you feel waiting, know that God is right there with you. And so we're going to play this song. The song is called Jira. And I want you to closely listen to the words. And I want you to, uh, to really, really, really uh, uh, sink in uh, this worship. And I mean, you may know the song, you may not, but once you get the hang of it, I want you to you do your personal worship. I don't care who's around you, but this is between you and God. And so if you need to go to another chair and be by yourself, that's totally fine. But this is between you and God. Let's pray, guys. Lord God, we just, Lord, we're just so thankful the gift that you give us, the life that you breathe into us. Lord, I, this song just hits me just in so many ways, Lord God. And it, it, it just reminds me that, that in, in the song very clearly in any circumstance, let all of us be content to where you have us. Father, let us stand still and remember the faithfulness starting from the garden starting from the exit and exodus to the times of the judges and the kings and how your hand was in the midst how your hand was always with us and where you promised the, the Savior King Jesus to come down to to adopt the form of a servant to to put on humanity so that he could dwell among us, so that he could relate to us, so he could be with us and be blameless and be sinless and be perfect and die a death that was rightfully ours. That cross that he was hung on was rightfully mine. It was rightfully ours, Lord God, but you took on the punishment of wrath, the wrath of the Father, the wrath of God that you, it was poured upon you king jesus and that we that um, three weeks ago we celebrated easter and how we celebrated a, a god we celebrate an empty grave where you defeated sin where you are victorious 
And so, Father, as we continue on in our waitlisted series, I pray that just like Paul and Silas, that we would continue to worship. You know, we may not be a, a person where we raise our hands or we pound our chest or, or we, may, we, we, we may not be a, 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 a worshiper just putting our hands in our pocket, but Lord, let the worship, the, 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 the worship of our hearts, let that be the stirring that, that shows us how much you love us. That you are Jehovah Jireh, meaning the Lord you God provide. And Lord, that, that you love us so dearly. You love us immensely that we can't even, even imagine. So Father, I pray that, that as we wait for a relationship, for a job, for a college application, for sports, or just for daily living, I pray that, that you, your faithfulness would, would, would abide in them that they would see you as a faithful God. So Father, bless these students. We thank you, Lord, for the time tonight. I pray, Father, that they would uh, uh, ask questions, that they would that they would use this worship song maybe as an as a anthem, as a declaration uh, for, for what they're going through. And I pray, Father, that you would give them peace, your peace, that you would bless their steps, that you would watch over them, be gracious to them and show them your faithfulness in each step of their daily living. So Father, we love you, we thank you, and Christ we pray. Amen and amen.